Okay, so here we are, module 20. This is uh, fiscal policy and how it relates to aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And here are uh, two of the economists. We're familiar with John Maynard Keynes, and uh, his kind of rival is uh, Friedrich Hayek. So here's just, uh, just an overview of each of their policies, you know, and their, their schools of thought. Um, we know Keynes believes government should get involved. Um, he's not worried about the long run. He thinks we should get involved in the short run while we're still around. Um, believes that the government needs to act to get the economy moving again. And Hayek is sort of the opposite of all of that. Um, he thinks the economy should be left alone, worry about the long run, Government can only cause problems. People should be uh, acting because they're the ones who know what's in their own best interest and so on. And as I said, this course mostly has a Keynesian slant to it. Um, doesn't mean that uh, it's necessarily right or wrong, but this is just where macroeconomic theory seems to veer. And so let's look at uh, how macroeconomic policy applies to um, or deals with demand shocks. So government tries to stabilize the economy, and so they want to reduce recessions, reduce the time and the severity, and they want to rein in expansions when they happen too fast and cause excessive inflation. Um, negative demand so shocks will cause a recessionary gap. These are decreases in demand. Price level falls, right, which is not necessarily a bad thing in the short run, but GDP also falls, which causes problems. And unemployment becomes the primary problem of a recessionary gap. And so government policy, both fiscal and monetary policy, is designed to re uh, reverse this fall in aggregate demand. We'll talk mostly about fiscal policy this chapter and monetary policy in Unit 4. Um, positive demand shocks, increases in aggregate demand, are going to cause inflationary gaps. Price level goes up, so does GDP. Unemployment is falling, but the problem that is created is inflation, and that's what the government tries to rein in. A little bit of inflation is okay, but it's hyperinflation, or excessive inflation that becomes the problem. And so government policy is designed to reverse that increase in aggregate demand, hopefully shortening the duration of any inflationary period. Supply shocks, okay, these are changes in aggregate supply. Supply shocks are tough because there's not a whole lot policymakers can do to reverse a supply shock. These need to sort of um, get fixed of their own accord. It is much easier to affect spending through aggregate demand than it is to affect production through aggregate supply. Okay? We can raise taxes or lower taxes. Government can inject money into the economy. But it's very hard to um, convince businesses to act in a certain way. And so a negative supply shock causes the condition known as stagflation. This is probably the most difficult problem to deal with, okay? If they wanted to shift aggregate demand to the right to fight unemployment, right, that would make the inflation worse. And then if they wanted to shift aggregate demand to fight the inflation, that would make the employment worse. And we'll take a look at this in class and so stagflation is one of those problems that really causes government's uh, fits. And so when we have a negative supply shock, a decrease in aggregate supply, there are not really many good options for our government to deal with this. So let's look at fiscal policy. Fiscal policy are actions taken by the president and Congress, right? And there's two tools at their disposal, as we've talked about. They can raise or lower taxes, and they can increase or decrease government spending, okay, including transfer payments. Um, these are the only two tools they have at their disposal. This is what fiscal policy is, taxes and spending. 
They can also borrow to make up any shortfalls from tax revenue, but this really isn't a part of fiscal policy. Um, if we spend money and uh, government spends and lowers taxes, they're going to cause uh, the government and the um, budget to be in deficit and increase the debt, but they can borrow to make this up if they absolutely must. So let's look at fiscal policy. Fiscal policy has the greatest effect on G in our equation, government spending, because government can spend and put money right into the economy. Fiscal, also, fiscal policy also has an effect on C, on consumption, right? The way consumption is affected is through raising or lowering income tax. If the government raises income taxes, that leads to, that's not a greater than sign, that's an arrow, leads to less disposable income, which leads to lower consumption. And of course, on the flip side, if the government lowers taxes, that will increase disposable income and lead to higher consumption. Always assume, unless it is specifically mentioned, that tax policy affects consumers, not businesses. If we want uh, business taxes to be affected, usually it will specify taxes are raised or lowered on businesses. So let's take a look at what's happening here with the recessionary gap. Right? You can see that uh, our current output is below full employment output. And you see our current equilibrium and price level represented by Y and PL. In order to fix a recessionary gap, the government wants to engage in expansionary fiscal policy. And so they can increase government spending, G, cut taxes, which affects C, or they can increase transfer payments, which will lead to more spending as well. And so what happens is their goal is to shift aggregate demand to the right. This creates a new aggregate demand curve. And now we are at equilibrium with aggregate demand, short-run aggregate supply, and long-run aggregate supply all meeting at our full potential output. And we have our new price level. And the government has fixed it. Now here's an inflationary gap. Here you can see that we are operating beyond our full potential. Okay, uh, Prices are higher than they would normally be. In this case, the government wants to engage in contractionary fiscal policy. They can decrease purchases, increase taxes, or decrease government transfer payments. And this will shift aggregate demand to the left, creating a new aggregate demand curve, lower price level, and we're in equilibrium at our full employment level of output, right? And so these are the two corrections for a recessionary gap and an inflationary gap. Now, some of the problems with fiscal policy, okay? The the first problem is the recognition lag. The problem with fiscal policy is it doesn't always uh, happen that the government recognizes that there's a problem, right? And so if the government doesn't see that we're in a recession or doesn't see that we're experiencing inflation, they're not going to be able to fix it, obviously. The next type of lag that we deal with is a decision lag. This is something we've seen in our government. Even though we know that there's a problem, we can't agree on how to fix it. Congress and the president can't come to that consensus. This is known as the decision lag. And then finally, we have the impl implementation lag. This is the time it takes to put the decision into effect. So a problem must be recognized. Then Congress and the president must come to a decision. And then that decision must be implemented. And this is one of the big problems with fiscal policy. It takes a long time for it to be enacted. Again, any questions, please make sure you bring them to me tomorrow.